Decentralized finance has been surprisingly resilient to the current dip, and many of the cryptocurrencies which host this ecosystem have also weathered the storm quite well. Now, while Phantom is not necessarily on this list of resilient smart contract cryptos, it has nonetheless positioned itself to be one of the leading DeFi hubs once the bull market gets back on track. This is because Phantom's native FTM token has listed on multiple reputable exchanges over the last few months, and it's also begun hosting some of the most popular DeFi protocols in the space. Prior to the dump, Phantom was itching to pump, and this might present the perfect opportunity to buy the dip on this altcoin gem. Today, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to decide whether Phantom is worth your hard-earned cash and how high FTM could go. Now, I don't mean to burst your bubble, but if I gave you any financial advice, I'd be in trouble. Financial advice is not my biz. Educational content, however, most certainly is. If you've come from a faraway land, my name is Guy and I am the Crypto Man. The Coin Bureau is where I dish out the highest quality crypto content on the tube. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, market moves. No matter the topic, there's something here for you. If you need a break from watching the charts 24-7, subscribing to the channel and pinging that notification bell is a great way to help with your obsession. Life is short, which is why I've left timestamps in the video timeline that you can use to skip around to the topics you can't wait to explore. I implore you to watch from start to finish, and maybe you will just because I asked in British English. So now that you're in tune, let me tell you why Phantom is so cool. Phantom was founded in early 2018 by Ang Byung Ik. I'm sorry if I butchered your name there, brother. Ang holds a PhD in computer science and is the founder of multiple successful startups. He also holds prestigious positions at various tech oriented associations in South Korea. Oddly enough, Ang is apparently no longer affiliated with Phantom, and this might be due to the stringent cryptocurrency regulations in South Korea. This seems to be of little consequence, given that Phantom is more frequently associated with Andre Kronje, the famous South African DeFi developer who created the Yearn Finance Protocol. Andre worked for Phantom full-time in its early days and was instrumental in implementing the peer-reviewed distributed ledger technologies detailed by researchers at Arn's alma mater. Andre is now just an advisor to the Phantom Foundation which is a for-profit company registered in the Cayman Islands that develops Phantom. In the beginning, Phantom's focus was to create a cryptocurrency that would be suitable for smart cities. To that end, Phantom touted its theoretical speed of 300,000 transactions per second. It seems that this goal was a bit too ambitious, however, and the high transaction speeds the Phantom team promised have decreased significantly over time. Today, Phantom has turned its focus to DeFi and enterprise solutions relating to supply chain tracking, healthcare, tokenized assets, and, of course, central bank digital currencies. Phantom has had a decent degree of success in all these categories, with hundreds of millions of dollars in total value locked and dozens of partnerships with famous tech firms and government agencies around the world. Phantom owes these achievements to the project's academic guidance, the DeFi designs crafted by Andre, and the strong institutional connections of the Phantom Foundation's diverse and talented team. Phantom's main net went live in December 2019, but it wasn't until the tail end of 2020 that Phantom began to implement most of its core features and functionalities. The last piece of the Phantom puzzle was placed earlier this year with the release of Phantom's on chain governance process. Phantom is now complete, or at least as complete as a cryptocurrency can be. Given that Phantom was still essentially in development when I covered it over one year ago, a lot has changed when it comes to what's going on under the hood. Instead of a blockchain, Phantom uses something called a Directed Acyclic Graph, or DAG for short. This is a type of distributed ledger technology that allows any computer connected to the network to process transactions in parallel. Now, this is in stark contrast to other cryptocurrencies which have a single block producer processing transactions, be it a miner or a validator. Without getting too technical, each computer connected to a DAG 
gossips its transaction to a random set of nearby nodes. And these nodes gossip that message to another set of random nodes, and so on. Just like a rumor, that transaction spreads like wildfire throughout the entire network. And there are special mechanisms in place to make sure none of those transactions conflict or overlap. These special mechanisms are, quite frankly, way outside the scope of this video. In any case, this setup makes it possible for Phantom to process, quote, thousands of transactions per second. This is a far cry from the 300k TPS the team initially promised. However, as I mentioned during my recent video about the fastest cryptocurrencies, finality matters more than TPS. In case you didn't know, finality is how long it takes for a transaction to be considered final. On Phantom, transaction finality is achieved within one to two seconds. This is a much faster finality time than many other cryptocurrencies with much bigger TPS scores. Phantom is also smart contract compatible and leverages the Ethereum virtual machine, which makes it interoperable with Ethereum. The caveat here is that the EVM has some constraints when it comes to transaction speeds. These were meant to be addressed by the Phantom virtual machine, which has yet to come to fruition. When it comes to consensus, Phantom uses a special proof of stake consensus called Lachesis. Now, it's worth pointing out that Lachesis seems to be somewhat less secure than other proof-of-stake consensus mechanisms as it only requires one-third of nodes to act maliciously to corrupt the network. Thankfully, Phantom's ingenious staking setup makes such a scenario next to impossible. For starters, validator nodes on Phantom must put down a minimum stake of 1 million FTM, which is around 200 grand at today's discounted prices. Validators also cannot stake more than 15 million of their own FTM on their own node. These requirements are probably a part of why Phantom only has 48 validators. Delegators only need to put down one FTM, and delegation is easily done through Phantom's web wallet. Phantom staking rewards for validators and delegators depend on how long they lock up their FTM for. This can be anywhere from a day to one year. With the maximum lockup, the annual return is about 11%, which is not too shabby for a proof-of-stake cryptocurrency. It also seems to be enough to motivate over 63% of token holders to stake their FTM on the network. Now, even though FTM technically doesn't have a minimum lockup period, there is an unlocking period of seven days, regardless of how long you decide to stake. So keep that in mind if you plan on doing so. Not only that, but there is a risk you could lose all the FTM you staked. This is because Phantom has a zero-tolerance policy for bad behavior and will slash 100% of the staked FTM of a misbehaving validator, including its delegated stake. That's a hell of a way to keep validators in check. The craziest part about Phantom staking is that it's possible to use staked FTM in Phantom's DeFi ecosystem thanks to its liquid staking feature. Now, Phantom technically has two DeFi ecosystems. The first is Phantom Finance, and it's designed to be a one-stop shop for everything DeFi. Rather than porting over wrapped tokens and coins from other cryptocurrency blockchains, Phantom Finance features synthetic versions of popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. These synthetic cryptos can be bought using FUSD, which is a synthetic stablecoin collateralized by the FTM token at a 5 to 1 ratio. Now, the cool thing is that this collateral can come from your stake in the form of SFTM, which is just a tokenized version of the FTM you're staking. Once you've put up the necessary collateral to mint the amount of FUSD you want, you can use it to trade over 176 assets with zero slippage. The best part of Phantom Finance is that it can be easily accessed through Phantom's web wallet. Now, obviously, Phantom Finance has its limits, which is why Phantom has a second DeFi ecosystem consisting of some of the most popular Ethereum DeFi protocols. This list includes SushiSwap, Curve Finance, and Cream Finance. Using these DeFi protocols on Phantom requires configuring your MetaMask wallet to support the Phantom network, and I'll leave a tutorial in the description if you need it. When it comes to moving your Ethereum tokens to Phantom, you can do this in two ways, using the REN bridge or the Phantom bridge. 
While the REN bridge requires both ETH and FTM, the Phantom bridge only seems to require the FTM token, and each cross-chain transfer costs 100 FTM. I imagine that some of that FTM is sold for ETH behind the scenes to pay for network fees, which is a clever way of driving demand for the FTM token for cross-chain transactions. Now, on that note, let's take a closer look at FTM's tokenomics. FTM is Phantom's native token. It's used for staking, governance, network fees, and as collateral to use the Phantom Finance ecosystem. FTM also exists as an ERC20 token on Ethereum and as a BEP2 and BEP20 token on the Binance chain and Binance Smart chain, respectively. FTM's total supply across all chains is 3.175 billion. This is FTM's maximum supply, and all FTM tokens were minted when the Phantom mainnet launched in December 2019. 37% of FTM supply was sold to private investors in three rounds in the first half of 2018 at a price tag of 1.6 cents, 3.5 cents, and 3.5 cents. These sales raised nearly $37 million. Only 1.5% of FTM supply was sold to retail investors during an ICO in the summer of 2018 at a price of 4 cents per FTM. This raised an additional $2.6 million. 15% of FTM supply went to advisors, 10% went to the team, and about 4% of FTM supply was set aside as a reserve to fund various initiatives. The remaining 31% or so of FTM supply has been allocated to staking rewards. At a rate of roughly half a million FTM per day, this gives Phantom until 2024 to reach the adoption needed for the network to survive off transaction fees alone. Note that this daily staking reward can be changed by governance. Now, I'll come back to governance in a moment. First, let's pull up the charts. I'll start by saying that Phantom was looking fantastic until that nasty dip last week. As a mid-sized altcoin, FTM's price depends heavily on what BTC is doing. This is because the further you go outside of the top 10 or 20 alts, the more volatility you're likely to see, courtesy of the greedy retail traders who think they'll be rich when FTM's price becomes as big as Bitcoin's. Now, while this is simply not going to happen due to FTM's large supply, it still has a lot of potential in percentage terms, even more so now that it's trading at a quarter of its all-time high. FTM's February spike was driven by the news that Alameda Research is investing $35 million in Phantom. A blog post from the Phantom Foundation highlights that Alameda's funding came in the form of purchasing $35 million of FTM. Given Phantom's small market cap at the time, taking hundreds of millions of FTM tokens off the market further facilitated the speculative price pump. The run-up to FTM's all-time high in early May was in response to a flurry of bullish announcements about Phantom. The first was a partnership with the government of Afghanistan to track fake medication. The second was a partnership with the government of Tajikistan to power its digital infrastructure. And the third was a partnership with a private school institution in Pakistan. Even though FTM's price looks pretty dismal at the moment, it's one of the few cryptocurrencies on the market that's fully functional. It also checks all the boxes in terms of tokenomics. With a market cap of just 600 million at the time of shooting, taking FTM back to its all-time high of 90 ish cents would not be very difficult. This would make for an easy 3 to 4x from its current price, and I could see FTM pushing past $2 if Bitcoin continues to follow the Wyckoff pattern. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch my video about that using the link up there in the top right. Anyways, Phantom's fundamentals continue to improve regardless of the price of FTM, and those government partnerships are just a few data points on an incredible adoption trend. In January, Phantom partnered with Injective Protocol, which is one of the cryptocurrencies I hold in my personal portfolio. The partnership made it possible to use Phantom's synthetic F tokens on the Injective Protocol DEX. I'll leave a link to my video about Injective Protocol in the description if you want to learn more about it. In February, Ledger added support for FTM, making it the first non-native wallet for Phantom assets. A few weeks later, The Graph added support for the Phantom blockchain. 
Now, this is important because it also makes Phantom developers eligible for grants from the graph. At the end of February, Phantom's DAG network came to a screeching halt. This happened just three days after Alameda announced they had dumped $35 million into Phantom. Not surprisingly, the issue was caused by the fact that the two largest validators that accounted for more than a third of the total FTM stake were suddenly not able to keep up with all the other validators on the DAG. It seems that Block Tower Capital took this FUD as an opportunity to buy the dip, investing over $20 million in Phantom in early March. The next day, Phantom announced that it would be using $2 million of those dollars to fund developers building on Phantom. The 10 winners of this initiative were recently announced, and all of them were remarkably innovative DeFi protocols. Also in March, Phantom presented its DAG to the United Nations as a potential platform for a central bank digital currency. Now, why the United Nations is involved in CBDC discussions is a topic for another time. In April, Hyperchain Capital decided to join in on the fund by throwing $15 million at Phantom. In May, Phantom partnered with those governments and institutions I mentioned a few moments ago, and the most recent high-profile partnership took place at the beginning of June. This was with an Uzbekistani consulting firm with close ties to the government of Uzbekistan. With some luck, Phantom will be providing blockchain solutions to the Uzbek government in the near future as well. The final Phantom announcement worth noting is FTM's listing on the Gemini cryptocurrency exchange, which foreshadows listings on other US exchanges. Coinbase seems to be next in line given that FTM is already supported by Coinbase Custody. Now, surely, if they can list Shiba Inu, they can list Phantom. You can learn more about Coinbase's listing criteria by watching my video about that. The link is up there in the usual spot. When it comes to what's on the horizon for Phantom, there don't seem to be any concrete plans. A recent interview with the Phantom Foundation's head of marketing suggests that the focus going forward will be around institutional and retail adoption. The former will be achieved with the close connections the Phantom Foundation's members have in certain countries. The latter will be achieved by convincing popular Ethereum projects to launch on Phantom and to create new and original dApps and protocols of their own. Phantom's governance dashboard also offers a few clues as to what else there is on the menu. Currently, it's to reduce the minimum stake to become a validator from 1 million to 500,000 FTM. Now, this might still sound like a lot, but a few months ago, the minimum validator threshold was well over 3 million FTM. What's interesting about Phantom's governance process is that you don't vote yay or nay in favor of a proposal. Instead, you signal how much you support the motion on a scale of 1 to 4. For a proposal to pass, at least 66% of all staked FTM must have tipped the scale by more than 66% in favor within 10 days of the proposal. Tabling a proposal also requires burning 100 FTM tokens. If the proposal involves a major change to Phantom, such as the FTM staking reward, this requires 66% of all staked FTM to be more than 90% in favor of the change. Now, it's worth pointing out that two of the six proposals for Phantom that have been tabled so far involve refunding slashed validators. Both of these were passed, and this could undermine the significance of the slashing penalty on the network and open up the door to sanctioned malicious behavior via governance. Then again, I don't know what the details were with these slashes, and there may be some circumstances wherein reversing a slashing penalty is desirable. This ties into a larger discussion about whether code is law in cryptocurrency, and that's something I covered in depth in my recent video about Ethereum Classic. And yep, it's up there in the top right. Phantom is a cryptocurrency project that combines the best features of its smart contract competitors. Most of Phantom's tech is based on peer-reviewed research, just like the approach taken by Cardano. Phantom uses a DAG instead of a blockchain, which makes it super efficient, like Avalanche. Instead of reinventing the smart contract wheel, Phantom leverages the Ethereum virtual machine and has done a very good job of convincing Ethereum projects to hop over to its DAG. Phantom's customizable staking dishes out rewards based on how committed someone is to the project, just like the internet computer. 
Phantom's harsh slashing penalties ensure that the vulnerability of its consensus is never intentionally exploited, which is the same idea Solana has had since that project began. Phantom's governance mechanism is as well thought out as Polkadot's, perhaps even more so. Phantom has even managed to attract the attention of foreign governments, which is something only a select few cryptocurrencies like Stellar, Cardano, and Algorand have managed to do. There are just two concerns I have with Phantom. The first is centralization. Now, I remember that Phantom is supposed to have a multi-layered architecture, but these details seem to be missing from its updated documentation. The reason I take issue with this is because Phantom's initial architecture seemed to imply that certain parts of its operations would take place independently of its validator nodes. This is similar to how Polygon has a centralized plasma chain that runs smart contracts that are connected to a decentralized proof-of-stake chain that submits snapshots to Ethereum. Now, even if this isn't the case, Phantom's failure in February is enough to show that its network is a bit too centralized. The second concern is arguably more severe, and that relates to the project's identity. The sudden pivot from smart cities to DeFi suggests that Phantom was much more reliant on André Cronier than the Phantom Foundation is willing to admit. André is obsessed with tech, and many of Phantom's most innovative and important features seem to have been designed and or implemented by him. Now that he's moved on to other projects, it's possible that Phantom could be left in the dark. There's an easy cure for this concern, though, and that's to see how far Phantom has come without Andre's hand on the wheel. There are not many cryptocurrencies on the market that are seeing this level of adoption from institutions, investors, and the average crypto user. Phantom has a very bright future ahead of it, and I might just put my own money where my mouth is. If you thought this flick about Phantom was fabulous, give that like button a click. While you're at it, subscribe to the channel and give that bell icon a click. If you can't wait for the next Coin Bureau clip, you can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter to get my opinions, memes, behind the scenes, AMAs, and all sorts of cool shit. If you're on Telegram, join the Coin Bureau Insider Telegram channel. It's the only crypto TG channel you need, and it doesn't cost a thing because it's free. If you're a bit of a bookworm, you can get your fill by subscribing to my weekly newsletter. It's where I give you a detailed breakdown of everything you need to know about crypto today and tomorrow. And of course, if you have some spare change handy, you can support the channel by getting yourself a t-shirt or hoodie from the Coin Bureau merch store. All the links to these bad boys are in the video description. You can't miss them. If you made it this far, I'm very flattered. Thank you so much for your time. Take care and don't let the FUD get to your head. Oh, 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 oh